Robinson. Hey, how's it going, you fiends? I'm Demi Bobemi. And I'm dead inside. And welcome back to another episode of Inheritance. Hell yeah, dude. Um, we have like a new audio setup, so I hope this <laughs> hope this is sounding good. We won't know until we're editing, so. I feel like classic. You know what I mean? It's like every couple of episodes we're like, by the way, something audio is happening. <clears throat> Well, in the last couple episodes, we were having audio issues, mm -hmm. and I was able to, like, salvage the audio and get it to sound, like, somewhat okay, yeah. just from audio processing, but it was, like, pretty, pretty tough. Like, if you go listen to probably, like, 10 chapters ago, the audio was sounding, like, crisp, <laughs> but now the the previous couple episodes it was sounding not so great so i had to fix it and hopefully now it's fix fixed at least for now until i end up getting a new audio thing <laughs> and then it'll be a whole nother issue i was gonna say keep your fingers crossed everybody but it'll be too late <laughs> <laughs> all right demi give us one of those glorious recaps we're gonna definitely need it for this this episode more more so than we've needed it in the past. Need it now more than ever. Demi's recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the final showdown. Aragon and Murtag are gonna fight each other. And then they stab each other. And then Murtag says, guess what, Galvatorix? You're going down, baby! And then he says a word. And then it zoops all of the magic away from... Uh, Galbatorix and he said you didn't actually sap all my protections but then turns out he did but then it didn't really do anything and then Aragon was like well if you're gonna fucking tail take my soul away I'm gonna make you feel real bad about it and then it oh. and then that, that's, that's it pretty much what happened yeah he's like if you're gonna <laughs> if you're gonna enslave me I'm gonna make you feel real bad about it <laughs> and I was like damn Gobletorx felt so bad, he... Just zooped on out of the fucking existence. <laughs> <laughs> so, how would you rate that uh, recap? On a scale of one to whatever. I would give it a whatever. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of if you missed anything. I think you pretty much got all the important parts. I mean, the most important part is that, like, that they defeated Galbatorix. Yeah, he gone. The, that's, like, an important thing, I think, to throw in there, because you did just say he felt bad about it. Oh, yeah, he, but, like, he gone. He gone, done, <laughs> got dead. Well, he gone, he gone, gone, got dead himself. He's not really, like, dead, though. What do you he mean just, he's not dead? He blew himself up. No, he unexisted himself. He hydron, he hydron, hydron collided himself. Yep. That's concerning. <laughs> you fucker. <laughs> I deserve that, though. I feel like my fucking back's not straight in this chair. I feel like I'm, like, tilted to the side or something. I do that a lot in these chairs. It's like the little wings just, like, make you kind of want to, like, <laughs> lay your head against them. <laughs> Whenever then, we watch shows, I do that. Yeah, and then you just kind of realize that you're, like, si sitting tilted in the chair, and you're like, hello? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? Like, how did I get here? Chapter 69. Hey, the one we've all been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> Death throws. That, <laughs> that really fucking 180. <laughs> really took down the mood there. Yeah, noon to six real quick. <laughs> Roran sat on a litter that the elves had placed upon one of the many blocks of stone just inside the ruined gate of Urubayan, giving orders to the warriors in front of him. Four of the elves had carried him out of the city, where they could use magic without fear of Galbatorix's enchantments distorting their spells. They had healed his dislocated arm and broken ribs, as well as the other wounds Barst had inflicted, although they warned him that it would be weeks before his bones were as strong as before, and they insisted that he remain off his feet for the rest of the day. So he's got like glass bones right now. <laughs> so I was thinking about that. I'm like, what do they mean? But like his 
bones were broken, so they have to, like, mend themselves. But for some reason, I thought of, like, Harry Potter when the when the bone gets, like, zooped out of his arm. Yeah. I don't know why I thought that's what they were we've saying. Given, we've given you a draft of Skelegro. <laughs> <laughs> that accent was incredible. Was it? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Anybody that can <laughs> vouch for it, like, if you live where that accent is... Can you say that that was actually pretty good? Can you also tell me where that accent is from? Thank you in advance. <laughs> Likewise, he had insisted upon rejoining the battle. The elves argued with him, but he told them, either you take me back or I'll walk there myself. Their displeasure had been obvious, but at last they agreed and carried to where he now sat, looking over the square. As Rowan expected, the soldiers had lost their will to fight, with the death of their commander, and the Varden were able to push them back up the narrow streets. By the time Roran returned, the Varden had already cleared a third or more of the city and were fast approaching the citadel. They had lost many. The dead and dying littered the street, and the gutters ran red with blood. But with their recent advances, a renewed sense of victory gripped the army. Roran could see it in the faces of the men and the dwarves and the Urgles, though not the elves, who maintained a cold fury at the death of their queen. The elves worried Roran. He had seen them killed soldiers who were trying to surrender, cutting them down without the slightest compunction. Once loosed, their bloodlust seemed to have few bounds. Um, that's an interesting observation, I think, because this whole time, at least to me, the elves have felt like, oh, we're like above your human ways and we're like so great, but... And, like, I understand, like, they lost their queen. Like, it's, like, I get it. But it seems a bit um, cold to be, like, people surrendering and, like, just cutting them down. Like, that seems like a very, like, human, bloodlusty, like, feral animal kind of, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, to me, I don't know. I don't know, maybe he's trying to say they're like, ooh, cold and calculating, whatever. Like, they have no remorse, like, whatever they're saying. But The elves have lived in the wilds of Duwald and Varden for a long time now. They're probably pretty feral. I just think that's interesting. Or their feral comes out at the loss of their queen. Like, they're like, fuck this shit. <laughs> we want to go fucking home. But yeah, probably. You killed our queen, you fucker. <laughs> Prepare to die. Soon after Barst fell, King Orin had taken a bolt to the chest while storming a guardhouse deeper within the city. It was a serious wound, one that even the elves apparently were unsure they could heal. The king's soldiers had taken Orin back to the camp, and so far, Roran had heard no word of his fate. Although he could not fight, Roran could give orders. Of his own accord, he had started to organize the army from the rear, gathering up the stray warriors and sending them on missions throughout Uruban the first being to capture the rest of the catapults along the walls. When he received a piece of information that he thought Jormunder or Oric or Martland Redbeard or any of the other captains within the army ought to know, <laughs> now he had runners seek them out amongst the buildings and convey the news. And if you see any soldiers near the big domed building by the market, be sure to tell Jormunder that as well, he said to the thin, high-shouldered swordsman who stood in front of him. <laughs> I was really distracted by the or, or, or. <laughs> so wait, what is he telling people? He's saying, if you see soldiers near the big domed building by the market, be sure to tell Jormunder. Okay. Yes, sir, said the man, <laughs> and the knob in his neck bobbed as he swallowed. <laughs> Ew. Roran stared for a moment, fascinated by the movement. <laughs> then he waved and said, go. <laughs> I feel like... So some guy was just like... And he's just like... Go. <laughs> I feel like Roran probably had a similar reaction to us at that description. It was just like, like, what the fuck? Go. Get <laughs> out of here, you fucking weird throat person. <laughs> weird bobby throat. <laughs> hey, Bob. My name's not Bob. <laughs> it is now. It is now. As a man trotted away, Roran frowned and looked over the peaked roofs of the houses toward the citadel at the base of the overhanging shelf. Where are you? He wondered. Nothing had been seen of Aragon or those with him since they entered the stronghold, and the length of their absence worried Roran. He could think of numerous explanations for the delay, but none boded well. 
The most benign was that Galbatorix was simply hiding, and that Aragon and his companions were having to search for the king. But after seeing the might of Shruikin during the previous night, Lorne could not imagine that Galbatorix would flee from his enemies. If his worst fears had come to pass, then the Varden's victories would be short-lived, and Roar knew it was unlikely that he or any of the other warriors within their army would live through the day. One of the men he had sent off earlier, a bare-headed, sandy-haired, a bare-headed, sandy-haired archer with a ruddy spot in the center of each cheek, ran out of a street to Roran's right. The archer stopped in front of the block of stone and ducked his head while he panted for breath. You found Martlin? Roran asked. The archer nodded again, his hair flopping over his glistening forehead. <laughs> and you gave him my message? Sir, yes, sir. Martlin told me to tell you that, he paused for breath, the soldiers have retreated from the baths, but now they've barricaded themselves in a hall close to the southern wall. Because <gasps> he's like breathing heavy. Yeah. Roran shifted on the litter and a pang ran through his newly healed arm. What of the wall towers between the baths and the granaries? Have they been secured yet? Two of them. We're still fighting for the rest. Martland convinced a few elves to go and help. Though, he also... A muffled roar from within the stone hill interrupted the man. The archer blanched, save for the spots of color on his cheeks, which appeared even brighter and redder than before, like daubs of paint on the skin of a corpse. Creepy. Sir... Is that shh? Roran cocked his head, listening. Only Shruikin could have roared that loud. That's such a good, like, sir, is that? And then shh. Because, like, you can tell, like, Roran is, like, listening mm -hmm. for, like, something to happen or yeah. something that's going to happen or, like, whatever. Like, he's, like... Assessing the situation. Yeah. And then you have this fucking dude, this ruddy-cheeked fucking floppy hair motherfucker fucking doodle ass motherfucker that when there's like a giant noise and potentially a sign of danger he's going sir was there something else and it's like did you not just hear the fucking giant roaring sound like do you not want to like be on high alert at all and it's like well that's why like roaring is like a hero and this dude's a fucking floppy haired probably best friends with old neck bobber <laughs> you know yeah I just think of all the times that like I've been at work or something and like something's like going off on the radio or something. I'm like, shh, shut up. Like, why are you talking right now? Knock it off. Someone talking on the radio. They're saying explosion. You don't want to <laughs> hear about that? You're not like at the least bit concerned. Yeah, they're saying emergency, emergency. <laughs> <laughs> they're saying we're being attacked by velociraptors. <laughs> I work at Jurassic Park, by the way, guys. That's my job. <laughs> what? Nothing. I've never told anyone what my job is. You can't just tell people you work at Jurassic Park. I'm a biogenetic engineer at Jurassic Park. I thought you were going to tell me you were like whatever Chris Pratt does in that movie. I'm a Chris Pratt <laughs> at Jurassic Park. My job title is Chris Pratt. I train the Chris Pratts at Jurassic Park. <laughs> For a few moments, they heard nothing else of note. Then another roar sounded from inside the citadel, and Roran thought he could make out other fainter noises, although he was not sure what they were. Throughout the area in front of the ruined gate, men, elves, dwarves, and urgles paused and looked toward the citadel. Another roar, even louder than the last, rang forth. Roran clutched the edge of the litter, his body rigid. Kill them, he murdered. Kill the bastard. Shh! said the ready ruddy cheeked <laughs> could you imagine <laughs> um you had like i guess maybe like a freudian slip instead of saying murmured you said murdered muttered well whatever you said murdered and that's not the word Mut muttered murdered no i think i said mur muttered murdered <laughs> <laughs> Roran clutched the edge of the litter, his body rigid. Kill him, he muttered. Kill the bastard. Fucking get him. Shh, said the red, <laughs> red, ruddy-cheeked bitch. <laughs> Imagine. That'd be so rude. A vibration, subtle but noticeable, passed throughout the city as if a great weight had struck the ground. With it, Roran heard... 
Roran heard what he thought was something breaking. Then silence settled over the city, and every second that passed felt longer than the last. Do you think he needs our help? The ass, the arch, the ass, <laughs> the archer asked in a soft voice. Oh, he says it in a soft voice, but I just imagine like silence settling and like that calm before like the storm is happening. And then just some guy going, you think he needs our help? <laughs> <laughs> like just so. And it's like so quiet that like that person speaking kind of like makes you jump and you're like, why are you talking? <laughs> There's nothing we can do for them, said Rorn, keeping his eyes fixed on the citadel. Couldn't the elves? The ground rumbled and shook. Then the front of the citadel exploded outward in a wall of white and yellow flames. So bright, Rorn saw the bones within the archer's neck and head, his flesh like a red gooseberry held before a candle, his yeah. head devoid of a brain. <laughs> <laughs> nothing in that noggin. Roran grabbed the archer and rolled off the edge of the stone block, pulling the other man with him. A blast of sound struck them as they fell. It felt as if spikes were being driven into Roran's ears. He screamed, but he could not hear himself. Nor, after the initial clap of thunder, could he hear anything else. The cobblestones bucked underneath them. A cloud of dust and debris hurtled over them, blotting out the sun, and a massive wind tore at Roran's clothes. The dust forced Roran to squeeze his eyes shut. All he could do was cling to the archer and wait for the upheaval to subside. He tried to take a breath, but the heated wind snatched the air from his lips and nose before he could fill his lungs. Something struck his head, and he felt his helmet fly off. The shaking went on and on, but at last the ground grew still again, and Roran opened his eyes, afraid of what he would see. The air was gray and dim. Objects past a few hundred feet were lost in the haze. Small chunks of wood and stone rained from the sky, along with flakes of ash. A piece of timber lay across the street from him. Part of a flight of stairs the elves had broken when they destroyed the gate was burning. The heat of the explosion had already charred the beam along its full length. It's like, how the fuck did he not get burnt? Yeah, if they were that close, seemingly, to... No, like, wood is on fire, like, right next to him. I guess, like he said, he they, they dropped off the edge of the stone block. So there's a block protected them, I guess. But I feel like if it's that fucking hot, like that fucking big of a whatever, I feel like you'd have burns. Some kind of burn, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. The warriors who had been standing in the open now flayed on the ground, some still moving, others clearly dead. Rowan glared at the archer. The man had bitten through his bottom lip. Blood coated his chin. They helped each other off the ground and Roran looked where the citadel had been. He could see nothing but gray darkness. Aragon! Could he and Sephira have survived the explosion? Could anyone who had been close to the heart of such an inferno? Roran opened his mouth several times. <laughs> <laughs> trying to clear his ears. Gasping like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Which rang and hurt badly but to no avail. When he touched his right ear, his fingers came away bloody. Can you hear me? He shouted at the archer. The words nothing but a vibration in his mouth and throat. The archer frowned and shook his head. A spate of dizziness caused Roran to lean over and prop himself against a block of stone. As he waited for his balance to return, he thought of the shelf hanging over them, and it suddenly occurred to him that the whole city might be in danger. We have to leave before it falls, he thought. He spat blood and dirt onto the cobblestones. Then he looked in the direction of the citadel again. The dust still hid it, and grief clutched at his heart. Aragon. Aragon! <laughs> it's like, has an exclamation point after it, so it's like... I'm yelling. In his right. mind, though. Aragon! Um, can I just say, whenever... A book describes a man screaming. I, like, can't imagine what that sounds like. What do you mean? I don't know. Like, you can imagine, like, a girl screams off in the distance and you hear in your mind, like, ah! Yeah, like, what does a man sound like screaming? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, I, I can imagine men yelling, 
but like screaming feels like very shrill and like men typically aren't like shrill i just hear the uh that one scream that they use in movies all the time that <laughs> you know <laughs> once you hear that scream specifically or that yell or whatever like you hear it in every fucking movie and it ruins movies for you um i'm not excited to hear it unintentionally and for you to ruin every movie i've ever seen ever you know what i mean but you know what yell i'm talking about no. right i'll hear it though don't do it i'm gonna ruin it for everyone <laughs> um but i feel like in media typically when men are screaming, it's, like, more of a yell. Like, it's very, like, masculine and deep. But I feel like a scream is, like, kind of high-pitched. You know what I mean? Do Wonder you guys can... know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Wonder if I can find what I'm looking for just by typing man screaming. Uh-oh. Fucking ads! <laughs> Seriously, an ad for a seven-second video? Why does it sound like Space Station 13? I don't know. Maybe they use that sound effect. <laughs> when people record those clips, where are they doing this? Are they in a studio or are they just like in their garage and their neighbors are concerned? <laughs> I hope they're... <laughs> <laughs> I hope they're in their neighbor's garage. <laughs> <laughs> Does that just keep coming back around? It just keeps getting funnier the more I think about it. <laughs> yeah. That, no. Yeah, th th this sound is literally in fucking every movie. <laughs> and now that you heard it, you're never going to unhear it. It's actually called the Wilhelm scream because it's a... Uh, it's, it's originally from a movie, and then they just like like that scream so much they use it all the time. It sounds fucking ridiculous. Why do they like it so much? I don't know. Maybe because it... I don't, I don't know. It sounds like a man screaming, but it's like... Not like... Ah! Or something, you know? Like, terrified. It's like a... Oh! Like... Somebody getting, like, shot and, like, falling off their horse. Or, like, somebody, like, falling off a cliff. I mean, to be fair, like, I've never, like, been in a situation where I've heard a man scream before. So I don't know what it sounds like. But why does that sound so fucking comical to me? Like, that doesn't seem real. The, a, man a man screaming sounds comical that to one. you? No. I was going to say, no. that's the Capricorn coming out in her. That's rude. Um, no, the other screams were, like, spooky. Uh, but that yeah. one's ridiculous to me. That one seems like somebody did a joke, and then they just keep doing the joke. Is what it sounds like to me. No, no, I think men don't really scream too much. So it is kind of like a weird thing. You know? And then I'm just like, like men just kinda like yell. Yeah. Like men don't like scream. But you see what I'm saying? Is like No, I, yeah, I get it. Cause like I'm just like thinking of like situations that have been like terrifying where I've been like around men versus like around women. And like women kind of like scream for alert mm -hmm. and men kind of like yell for like either intimidation or like surprise or like something you know yeah. they're like ah! <laughs> like that's all like you can like get from a man or they're like hey bear like i'm just thinking of like like camping or something yeah. like when we like yell at like animals we're like ah! get out of here ah! mm -hmm. Yeah, because you come around a corner too fast, and I will scream. Yeah, and it's like an alert thing. It's like, ah, I need help, or like, I'm here and I'm in trouble. What? I feel like this is a whole other thing that I want to talk about, but I feel like this is not the place. Why? I don't know, because we're supposed to be talking about fucking fuck nut. <laughs> <laughs> well, start talking about it, and then I'll cut it or not. Okay. Will so, it make final cut? You guys are about to find out. <laughs> okay. So just like the idea of like the alert sound because, and I feel like this is probably going to get me in trouble, but 
because women are typically physically not as strong as men, that they're probably less likely to be able to fend off whatever danger it is alone. That that high pitched, like shrill scream, like is like basically just an alarm so that everyone in the area here isn't as like attracted to screaming sound. Demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You, you have to like finish it off. If you're going to say something that could be like controversial, what? you know, oh. you have to finish it off with like a comparison of like empowerment. Women are like velociraptors. They're pack hunters. So they have to alert <laughs> other members of their pack. I like that. Good job. I'm not good at whatever that is. Sucking ass. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is sidebar. Won't make final cut. But did you know baboons in like the wild suck each other's ass? They do. Really? <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> um, so when there's like predators around, they will scream so that everyone is alerted and they'll go to safety. Mm. But antelope, um, I'm pretty sure it was antelope, started like catching on. And so when the baboons would scream, they would run. But then the baboons would start like low key just alerting the baboons when lions were around. And so they'd scurry up into the trees and then they would scream. So the lion would get the antelope. Baboons they do were. like some weird like little baboon like warning call like like probably some like little chatter shit <laughs> <laughs> and then they all scatter up in the trees and then they go ah! it's not like fucked up but they like alert because a lion starts to like has learned that the scream is like there's yeah. prey and so the baboons learned that they could do that scream and get the lion to go eat a different animal just to, like, distract it or just to, like, literally watch it fucking die? <laughs> I mean, I don't know what their intentions are, but um, either way, they're not getting eaten. So I think that's, like, the main goal there, <laughs> you know? You're just some, like, little fucking... I'm trying to think of, like, another animal that would be around a baboon. Would, like, a boar be around a baboon? Maybe, like, a young warthog. <laughs> when I was a young warthog! Um... Maybe like a little warthog or something is just <laughs> like eating its like little food or whatever mm -hmm. the fuck it's finding in the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Or on the fucking prairie or whatever. The Serengeti. There we go. Eating its sarin spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just like chilling, eating, and then it's just like looking around and seeing all of these bamboos around it in a tree. <laughs> and it's like, that's fucking weird. And then it hears... <laughs> and it's like oh fuck a lion and then the lion just comes crawling out like i fucking heard that noise <laughs> and the baboons are just up in the tree like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> fucking kill it i just feel like that'd be fucked dude animals are fucked up that was the point of that story the screaming alerting reminded me of that you want to talk about fuck not now no nah, we're, we're too derailed too derailed to like really go back. I don't really care. Okay. <laughs> um, but real. Um, so that was just like a observation chapter from Roran's perspective of what we know is going on in the Citadel. Yes, Freya. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fucked up. Um, okay, so the big giant fucking blast what is that it's galbatorix he just explodes and that zoops the fire out of hmm zoops the fire what <laughs> okay so that big like blast with all the fire or like whatever the fuck is going on that's galbatorix like zooping out of here that's him like ending himself how come aragon's fine what do you mean aragon's fine we don't know oh. the last that we knew is he was like unconscious remember oh yeah i forgot <laughs> He could be fucking dead. That Him, Arya, Safira, Murtag, Nazawada. Mm -hmm. This is a young adult fantasy book. They're alive. But they could be dead. They aren't, though. That's why That's why a sense of dread filled Roran's heart, and he looked at the explosion, the, cit the citadel, or where it used to be, or the crumbles, or the fog, or the dust, or whatever, and okay. went, Aragon! With okay. his mind. Spoiler alert, they're not dead. Why would you spoil this? 
I've never even read this book before. <laughs> Spoiler. Um, you know how when Harry Potter wears the invisibility cloak? That's not a spoiler. The movie's been out for 14 years. <laughs> I just, there's a limit on spoilers, I feel like. But it's like not even a like, Yeah, that's true. It's like, like not it's even just, he wears an invisibility cloak. It's like, oh, he, wear, he has a fucking wand. Spoiler alert. <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's a wizard. Spoiler <laughs> alert. He gets a broom. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh. Roran will not get captured by Galvatorx. I just wanted to point that out. I think it's too late for that. Because <laughs> we're crossing out the ones that you got right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, you got that wrong. Still still time for Auric to die. When you, <laughs> <laughs> when you said uh, Orin had got hit. You thought it was Auric? Yeah, I started looking around and I... And you're like, fuck. But no, different people. Um, the name does not equal ego. So you like, got that kind wrong. Of, though. No. It was like everybody's name. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, you don't. <laughs> but it's like a like a little bit, right? Like, no. Kind of like everybody's name. No, the name is specifically the name of the ancient language. It's just like everybody's name. I mean, it's everybody and everything. Yeah. I don't think you can control people, but you can control magic. But you would say that Aragon would fall under the classification of everything. You got it wrong, dude. <laughs> I'm taking it as a win. <laughs> no, that's an L. Fuck you. Dude, you already have five wins. So six okay. wins. So just like chill, okay? I you got win you it got, all. You're going to have like seven L's. Just chill out. Okay, but Nazawada and Aragon, probably that's not happening because her and Murtag are like... You're half right. Someone was going to fall in love with her. Or you were three quarters right. Because <laughs> it's Aragon's half brother. Fuck, dude. Um, you know, if you turn that E to the side. It does make an N. Just boop, clockwise, one turn. Maragon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I still feel like Nazawada might be a writer, though. Okay. Well. And Murtag's good now. He good boy. You did get that right. And then there I you go. You take one L and you get a W. But that just cancels I even, each other out. And I even said like he might be the one that kills Galvatorix. And he wasn't like the one who got him. because He was instrumental. Yeah, he was like really important to that. Because Murtag, well not Murtag, Galvatorix like kind of killed himself. So I feel like that's kind of fucked up. And I didn't expect that <laughs> to happen. It's like an interesting concept that you could like force that emotion onto somebody to make mm -hmm. them feel bad enough to like want to be not yeah to unalive themselves mm -hmm. trying to think of like ways to not get demonetized talking about seppuku i mean he just made himself not exist he'd be not to he'd be not he'd be not um but i just like can't imagine any sort of villain understanding like Galbatorix, like he is very like intelligent. So I feel mm -hmm. like he would be able to rationalize like any emotion he's feeling and like it would either turn him good, you know, mm -hmm. and then he would like change his ways or he would like, just like not give a shit about the emotional aspect of it and compartmentalize it even more I or mean, something. I feel like, I feel like that spell I know it made him be not, but I feel like it would have just made him into a good person. But maybe Unless, that was like too cheesy. Um, they couldn't go full Care Bear stare. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but maybe it was like feeling all of those emotions all at once was so overwhelming that he couldn't handle it. Just write it out. It's like a bad fucking DMT trip. It'll end eventually. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. So he's overwhelmed, right, this with all these emotions. Trip, <laughs> Hold on. So he's a feeling remorse. So he bees, bees not. Be nots. You know what I mean? So I think that maybe he did become good guy. He feels sad. He say, me go away. Maybe. It's like he's like just now realizing for the first time he like he fucked up. He's like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, I fucked up, oh fuck. Like I killed all those dragons. 
I can't Maybe. live with my choices. Nah, I don't know. I don't buy Maybe. it. I don't buy it. <clears throat> I think it was a cop out to get rid of a OP. Oh, like two OP. Yeah. Of a villain. I think it was like I. The only person that can kill Galbatorix is himself. So that's gonna. That's how it's gonna that's have to be. Gonna have to be the thing. Um, I don't like write stories, but I did once hear like a tip from someone who like writes. They were like, if you're gonna write a villain, give them like a weakness because if you make them too strong, you can't kill them. And I was like, that's that's true because then it's like the nothing anyone does like is believable because they're too strong. Or you have to like ex machina. Yeah. And that's like just so fucking cheesy. It's like Galbatorix is about ready to cast a spell that was gonna enslave Aragon and a meteorite came and fucking <laughs> pelted his ass. Macho man Randy <laughs> Savage dropped from the ceiling and said the cream always rises to the top, brother. Hell yeah. <laughs> um Let's wrap this up. Okay. Um I, Were you guys oh. expecting uh I don't think we ever asked it. Bug! Pshaw. Um, I don't think we ever asked it, but were you guys expecting that end of Galbatorix in the last episode? Were you guys expecting him to get fucking Care Bear stared and then be not? I cannot believe. Did we already ask that? I can't remember. I think maybe we did ask that. I don't know. If we did, you got another a whole other chapter to talk about it. If not, you got a whole chapter to talk about it. <laughs> Because, like, nothing really happened here. Yeah. It just showed us kind of, like, Roran's perspective. And then, like, they're, like, vacating the area. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely didn't expect Galvatorx to get Care Bear stared. I mean, you kind of did. I mean, I said it as, like, a joke, but then it turned out to be real, and I just couldn't believe it. And I wish that would have been a theory. <laughs> I think I asked you if you wanted to make it a theory, too. You fucking did. I should have just... I should have looked into it more. You know what I mean? You know, I'm always out here <laughs> with your best interests at heart. Asking you... Just trying to hand you a dub. Don't be just like trying that. trying to fucking hand it to you. Don't be like that. You did make a sticky note, though, about it. So... So it's like a... It's, it's like not a, a It's not official dub. It's like a V. For victory? Well, like half of a W. For victory? Like if you had like a W. Yeah, but it was a V and it's it for victory. V for very close to a W. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't expect that at all. How that happened. I was surprised. Hey, Demi, you want to give everyone a moment and show off your hoodie that you're wearing? Oh <clears throat> I don't think we've ever like showed these to anybody no how do i do this do i just stand in front of the fucking camera yeah stand in front of the camera and i'll talk about it now for a um limited time well limited as in all the time on our teespring you can get this one of a kind dead inside hoodie it has a um <clears throat> ketchup and mustard on the sleeves and then it has a little dead inside rubber ducky on the front that you can sport. And then if we go to the the main feature, it is a cartoon uh, imagery of Demi in bathwater. Those are little hot dogs. <laughs> Just living her best life. This was drawn, the back part was drawn by our very own Ghosty. That's pretty cool. Her Instagram link will be a comment. And then also... The uh, Teespring store will be linked in the bio as well. The shit does not come on the shirt you when purchased. You don't get my dinner stains on the shirt. I was just like looking at it and I was like, I don't think we ever like told anybody like we did this. No, we just wear these hoodies all the time. <laughs> and people probably go, where do I get that? But uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, you know what to do. Hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so that you are notified when these go live. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> I just feel like YouTube really out here implementing like a thousand things for people to click. Yeah, it's gonna be like hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification, hit that join button. Don't forget to hit the uh, 
button as well. <laughs> there is now a smell-o-vision button, a live chat.